Welcome to Inspirational Women. This week we speak to courageous without Ismail, single mother, small business owner and a quadruple brain surgery survivor about how her challenges ultimately strengthened her and brightened her approach to life. Next, we head to Cape Town City Centre to discuss social responsibility and the ins and outs of South African legal practice with influential attorney, activist and director of Women's Legal Centre, Siham Sali. Lastly, we speak to incomparable Shahida van der Skaif, a spirited cancer survivor, about her new book, how she creates awareness about the disease and the power of miracles. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh and welcome to another episode of Inspirational Woman. I'm your host, Najwa Muhammad Ladi, and today we're coming to you live from Lotus River. I'm about to interview a woman who survived four brain operations. So come and join the team. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Welcome to another episode of Inspirational Woman. I'm your host, Najwa Muhammad Ladi, and today I'm sitting next to a really, really phenomenal inspirational woman. She survived four brain operations, mashallah. She's a single mother and she's living life to the fullest. Let me introduce you to this wonderful guest. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, Sister Widad. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa how are you, my darling? Alhamdulillah, I can't complain. Yes, like I said, survived four brain operations, mashallah. With that, it doesn't seem like you had any surgery <laughs> done 15 years ago, but maybe if you can just briefly tell our viewers, you know, where did it all start or how did it start 15 years ago, inshallah? It actually started with my ears. With your ears. I started losing hearing in the ear, yeah. the right ear. Okay. <clears throat> and that's when I went to see, I went to several ENTs actually. Okay. And at I think the fourth ENT, um, he suggested go for a scan. Yes. And that's when they picked up the tumour. Was it in the brain at that time? Yes, on, the, on the, op the, sorry, the nerve that goes from the ear to the brain, yeah. started growing there. And was it quite small or? It was a slow growing, so it, it, it probably grew from years, years ago. Slow growing. But it was quite big. Wow. It was very big. And with that, you survived four brain operations. Tell us, how did it feel, you know, that, that evening before you had to go in the next day? Oh. And I mean, at that time, you were mommy. You are a mother of two beautiful kids, mashallah. Um, what went through your mind? My kids were very small. So I had to be strong. Yes. Because they were little. Yes. They were quite little. Um, when they diagnosed the tumour, I didn't have a lot of time actually to absorb the information. Process all of that. No, because um, it was, look, diagnosis and we need to do it right now. It was an emergency operation okay. actually. Okay. Probably because it was so big. Because it was so big. Wow. Okay. And I believe you didn't go to a private hospital. No. You went to our state hospitals in yes. the Western Cape in particular. Tigerberg Hospital. Yes. How was that stay for you there? The stay not so good, but let me tell you, the uh, surgeons they yes. were they were excellent. Okay. They were very good. Okay. So that's a thumbs up, you know, for no, definitely. hospital definitely. surgeons, mashallah. Um, but I also believe after that um, you were in the corporate world for many years, mm -hmm. and after that, obviously, you know, you went on um, yes. early medical retirement as well. Actually, for two and a half years, I went back to work okay. and I tried to push through because I knew I needed to work. Um, it's one income coming in. Single mother. Single mother. Yes. Um, but then after two and a half years, my manager actually spoke to me and he said, you know what? Why don't you try medical boarding? Okay. And that's when I was actually medically yes. boarded. Yes. Without I also know, you know, when we came in here into your home, we <coughs> smelled this lovely, lovely <laughs> fresh muffins. I believe your daughter's a baker, but you also very really interested yes. in that. Yes. Okay. Yes. And it's really a Heiswinkel key for community, family, friends, where you basically just whoever's interested yes. in it, you will just offer to bake some stuff. Oh yes. In terms of your your, your condition, I mean you're a survivor of a brain tumor, brain surgery. Is it easy? Is every day the same? No. 
Definitely yeah. not. Okay. I, I wake up with pain, literally. Every single day? Every single day. Some days it's just more intense than others. The days when it's intense, I just take it easy. That's How do you all survive? I. <laughs> well, <coughs> well, what can I do? You know, when it's not a good day, I take it easy. Yeah. When it's a good day, I push myself okay. as much as I possibly can. Okay. And um, I believe you have a tube in your brain inserted into your body. Yes. Talk to us a little bit about that. It's a shunt. It's actually a shunt. Um, after the operation, they realized that it was actually my, my brain fluid was blocking up. Okay. So they needed to put in a shunt, um, which goes from the, 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 the brain yeah. right through to my stomach. And it basically just clears away the, the excess fluid. Yeah, yeah. It's, well, it stays in for life. So it's there. And I believe when they, um, when you did your operation, I think it was your first operation, they could only remove 80% of the tumor. Yes. What happened to the rest? It stayed. It's still, I still have it. You still have it? I still have it. Um, they couldn't because it was too close to my uh, medulla oblongata Which and my spinal it? cord. Yes, yes. And because um, it was actually pushing up against the spinal cord, so they couldn't remove all. It was too dangerous. Paralysis, so many things could, could go wrong. Exactly. So they removed as much as they possibly could. And that is why a couple of years after, I went for radiotherapy, specialized radiotherapy. Okay which is quite an ordeal, but had to. You had to, you survived, yes. alhamdulillah. But Dad, I also believe in terms of your facial fe features and your facial appearance, yes. there was changes in, yes. in, in the facial appearances. Um, how did that affect you or, or how does it affect you every single day? Well, um, people that don't know me and yes. that doesn't know my history, yes. they look at me, you know, something is yes. happening here. Yes, yes. Um, and they ask me, did I have a stroke and this and that. And no. Yeah. I, I, but you know what? Funny thing, after the first or second op, they actually suggested doing um, plastic surgery. Okay. And um, I said, you know what? I've been through enough. Mm -hmm. No. I'm okay. It's a small price to pay, mm -hmm. you know, for, for, for everything that I had to go through and, and for what it, yeah, what, what it actually sig signified. It's a small price to pay. Definitely. So definitely. I'm okay with it. <laughs> um, we dad, you know, I mentioned you're a single mother of two beautiful kids, mashallah. And we know, you know, as mommies, when we talk about our kids, you know, we tend to tear up. Your daughter's 20 years old, she's a varsity student. Yes. Your son is 17 years old, he's also on college, on college at the moment. Um, what, what role, you know, did, did they play in your life whilst you were going through this ordeal? They were very little when it started, okay. you know, within the first ops and so forth. So they didn't fully understand, yes. especially my son, because he was like, I think only two. Okay, okay. At the time he was two. Yes. So he didn't fully understand, but they grew up with it and that, that's all they knew. Yes. Growing up, that's all they knew. Mommy's sick, mommy has off days, those type of things. And it's not even a, a big deal to them. Yeah, yeah. Are they good kids? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, they are. They are. They are. Alhamdulillah. Tell me, that you know, um, you, you, you're a very inspiring <coughs> person. I don't think you really you really understand or, or the fact that this has happened to you. That's why, you know, you're on the show at these phenomenal that what you've gone through. But tell our viewers, what exactly, what ex inspires you every day? How do you get up every morning and just live? I would say my kids. Yeah. My kids are, plays a big role. Yes. And our creator, obviously. Yes. Because um, for me, I was, I was chosen. Mm -hmm. I was chosen and it, it's, it's not easy, I'm but sure it's my it's test. Yes. It is my test. Mm -hmm. That's how I see it. Mm -hmm. And it's just what pushes me through mm -hmm. each and every single day. Because I also believe you live your best life every yes, single no, day. Yes, no, definitely, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Nothing, no, nothing gets you under. <laughs> no. Even living with pain every yes. single day. Correct, wow. Wow. correct. Um, now I need to ask you, you know, in terms of dreams and aspirations in life, what are those dreams for Wida and Ishmael? Just to have comfort, stability, um, for to see my kids grow into good people. Yes. That 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 that's it. I'm simple. I'm simple. I keep it easy. 
I don't want a lot. I don't expect a lot. Um, but yes, that that's it. <laughs> Without you, you, you do realize you're an, you're an extremely special person. <laughs> so so. <laughs> um, I need to ask you, you know, um, a message to the world out there, because you've endured four successful brain operations. What message would you like to leave to all our viewers? Simply, um, you know, d don't let it get you down. Things happen for a reason. I believe. I believe. And you just, you just need to push through. That's it. Mm -hmm. One day at a time. That's, that's all I can say. If you get knocked down, just get up, go on. It's that simple. I believe also, um, you know, before we went on air, you mentioned that support is so important. Yes, no, yes. definitely. Yeah. How I, important is, is that support base? Well, when I was diagnosed, my family, they, they came together. No, really, they did. Yes. With my recovery, even, they, they came together. But what I would like to say is that, yes, they are supportive, but you, you, you cannot lean on them too much. Yes. You know, when it happens, you, you're down and you lean on them and they're there. But at some point, you need to pick yourself up. Absolutely. You need to. That's all about yourself. Yes, no, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Without Ishmael, Chazakala so, so, so much. You are really, truly inspiring. And, you know, from the ITV team, we want to thank you for allowing us into your space. Mm -hmm. Chazakala so much. Well, as you've heard this most inspiring sports story, our sister, Widad Ishmael survived four brain operations, living her best life every single day. So from the ITV crew and myself, Najwa Mohammed Ladi and Widad Ishmael, I want to wish you a beautiful day ahead. Fi yamani la wa assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh and welcome to Inspirational Woman. My name is Najwa Muhammad Ladi and today we are broadcasting from the Women's Legal Center in the heart of Cape Town. I believe they also have a few satellite offices but I will let the director of the WLC tell us a little bit more about that and she is none other than Sister Siham Samad. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, Siham. Assalamu alaikum to all the viewers. Thank you to ITV for having it's us. It's a great honor to be here. Thank you for having mm. us. Mm. And I must just say, when we walked in, when I walked in, I could feel the comfort, the warmth. There's such a good energy here. So shukran so much for having us, Siham. Siham, I went through your CV and it's a long list of a whole lot of qualifications and you're so active in the community. Mm -hmm. But before we talk about what the WLC is all about, talk to us a little bit about who is this phenomenal woman, Sister Siam Samai. I've always seen myself um, at the heart of the work that I do as an activist. Okay. Um, also as a teacher and you will see through all the work that I've done, yes. It is to be able to educate, yeah. in particularly women and young children, yes. around a range of issues yeah. that impacts on their life. Yes. So I've seen through everything that I've done, mm -hmm. I would say at the core yeah. is that I'm a teacher. And okay. I think that it is to be able to educate yeah. and to be able to teach and to be able to bring rights to people, whether or not it's me being an activist, yeah. whether or not it's me being a lawyer, whether or not it's me running this particular center, mm -hmm. I think it's fundamentally important mm -hmm. that our people need to be educated. Yes. And talking about a lawyer, you graduated how many years ago? And <gasps> what, what degree did you do? <laughs> well, I would say I graduated more than um, 18, 19 <laughs> years ago. Okay. I don't think I'm counting anymore, but um, I was at UWC and yes. I completed my BPROC. Um, in 1998 and then thereafter I completed my LM in constitutional litigation also at the University of the Western Cape. Mm -hmm. Thereafter I completed my articles at um, 
a human rights law firm, which is the Legal Resource Center. Right. And thereafter, I went to lawyers for human rights. So I've always been yes. within the public interest sector. Yes. Yes. I've always seen the work that I do, that whatever organization that I'm part of, it must resonate with my values. That's right. Um, and it was very important for me to be within the human rights sector. Okay, fantastic. Siham, um, the Women's Legal Center, this is the one, as I said, we're broadcasting from the Cape Town office. Do you have other uh, satellite offices as well? Yes, we do. We have an office in Kailicha, okay. which is more a paralegal um, advice mm -hmm. office where people can go to get legal advice mm -hmm. on a range of matters, from domestic violence to divorce to issues on evictions and housing and we have a paralegal sitting there every Thursday mm -hmm. and then we also have a, a unit which is what we call a help desk mm -hmm. at the family court in Cape Town. Right. Um, lawyers can come and they can do their pro bono services okay. at that particular unit and we are there on a Monday and Wednesday and then we have other law firms um, who come on uh, the, the Friday and the Thursday uh, to provide legal services to women. So is it, um, is it all free services to the vulnerable community that your people offer? The Women's Legal Centre, I yes. think, is an African feminist legal centre. And I think it's important that we centre ourselves as unapologetically feminist organisation. Okay. Um, so the, the work that we do is strategic litigation, okay. but it is informed Yes. by the work that we do in our units. Right. So it is very important for us to be grounded mm -hmm. and to be able to get our cases from women that come from the street, yes. women that come from the townships, women that come from informal settlements, and to be able to take their cases through the system. And we do all of this for free because we do understand that um, to go through the courts, it's quite expensive. Very expensive. And the cases that we do is that we take the matters from our units and we try to identify what the systemic challenges are. Yes, because we do know that women are disproportionately impacted by a range of things, whether or not it's eviction, whether or not it's domestic violence. Mm -hmm. It is just disproportionately impacted. They are just disproportionately impacted um, by those challenges. Right. And we also know that poverty in South Africa has got a, women have a they have the face of a woman. Absolutely. And how do we bring those socioeconomic standards, or not standards, but socioeconomic challenges, mm -hmm. through our cases before the court? Correct. It's yeah. very important that we bring the different identities of women mm -hmm. when we do do cases before right. the court. So strategic litigation is the core work that we do. Mm -hmm. And then we also do a lot of legal advocacy. Mm -hmm. We do legal education, um, and then we provide legal advice. Okay. Um, Siam, you're also very active, as we know, um, you know, as actives in the community. How do you juggle all these roles? Because I know you're also a mother. Yeah, I think it's it's the way I've been nurtured. I think that it's uh, in, in our family. Yes. Uh, my grandfather has always said <laughs> one third is what you have to also give to the community. I do think that if you come from, I even though I come from a working class um, area, um, also my, my parents, um, I believe that we were privileged to have gone to university and I do think that there's a duty on us mm -hmm. to be able to give back mm -hmm. to the community. And through that privilege, um, you know, I, from my university days, I used to teach, I used to do street law, I used to educate and also going back to Boakab, which is where I come from. That's right. <laughs> um, there are many challenges in Boakab and I think every young person should give back to that particular community. Yes because um, it is one of the only, I would say, um, hubs within the city centre where people of, of colour can still live. That's right, that's right, yes. And the community in itself is being impacted by gentrification, it's mm -hmm. impacted by a range of different challenges, mm -hmm. there's drugs, there's violence, and we need to be able to see how is it that we are going to survive all of this mm -hmm. through our own um, activities. Mm -hmm. And that is why I think it's important that, you know, you need to be able to give back. That's right. Um, Sister Siam, we also know that, you know, you play a pivotal role in the Muslim marriage. Is it act or bull? Well, what we've done years ago, um, the Muslim marriages bill obviously was, was, um, uh, was before Parliament yes. and 
Um, there was a lot of submissions that was made and also the Women's Legal Center played an important oh, role. Mm -hmm. um, but we know that um, for seven years after, um, there was no legislative framework that protects uh, protected women that were married in terms of Muslim marriages. Correct. Correct. And that is why in 2014 we decided in the public interest, the Women's Legal Center will um, take on the state which is the, the President, Parliament, Department of Home Affairs, Department of Justice, everybody that had a responsibility mm -hmm. to ensure that women are protected. Yes. Um, religious marriages in South Africa is not recognized. Mm -hmm. And in that, Muslim marriages is not recognized, which means that women in those marriages are disproportionately impacted upon the dissolution of marriage, um, whether or not it's by death or even by divorce. Mm -hmm. And we are not saying that we, we are not trying, and I think it's important to note, we are not trying to change Sharia, we are not trying to change um, the laws um, or Sharia laws, we are saying that women w who are married in terms of Muslim marriages right. need some form of protection. Yes, and justice and as well. Yes, because we know whether or not they want maintenance, when the divorce happens, they can't get maintenance. Okay. And our um, is, it, the Islamic bodies, mm -hmm. they do not have the enforcement powers mm -hmm. to be able to ensure that the women the women are nafakat. Yeah. They don't have the, 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 the powers to ensure that the husband don't evict that particular woman. Okay. And we also know that we, Muslim women in South Africa are predominantly black women. Mm -hmm. And black women in South Africa has been disproportionately impacted. Mm -hmm. No access to property, no access to resources. They come into marriages yes. with no, nothing. They build, you know, the resources within that particular marriage. Right. Divorce they don't get anything. Yeah. And I think we can see yes. Islam is a just yes. um, religion and we need to be able to, without saying that we want to change, we don't want to change the religion. Mm -hmm. All we're saying is that South African law are need to protect the women who are married in terms of Muslim marriages. Absolutely. Inshallah. No. Inshallah. And hopefully, you know, we will succeed, inshallah. Um, Sister Siam, we also know briefly, we have very, very limited time, you also had a stint as a director, Legal Services Department of Justice, and you were very active for the 16 days of activism. Briefly tell us about that. Well, the 16 days is to bring about awareness around violence against women and children and um, persons, um, you know, LGBTI persons. And the, the challenge that we do have is that violence in our communities have reached such a proportionate uh, um, it, it, it is just too high yeah. um, and our courts are currently sadly not working mm -hmm. for the women mm -hmm. we also know that the courts in itself can be a violent space for women right. and during that 16 days of activism we know it's a form of awareness mm -hmm. to be able to tell the community that these are the challenges facing women um, but I do think that we should have 365 days Inshallah. and women, women should be um, you know in the center and the 16 time. days are not the only <laughs> days that we bring about awareness correct, correct. you know I yeah. think that women are core um, in terms of the family yeah. it's core in terms of our communities and we need to give them 365 days I mean inshallah Sister <laughs> Shihan what message would you like to, to, to give to our viewers within a second um, to all the viewers, but in particular the young people, yeah. I think it's important that you understand your privilege, right. that you understand where you come from, and that there is an obligation in you right. to be able to educate um, people in our communities and also help our communities. Mm -hmm. I think that is the simplest message that I can give. Okay. Shukran very, very much, uh, Sister Sian Sama. It was so wonderful chatting to you. And you. well, that's the show for today for myself, Najwa Muhammad Ladi, and my beautiful, wonderful guest, Sister Sian Sama. I want to leave you with this message. Remember, empower yourselves because uh, knowledge is power. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum, hello and a heart like a welcome by Inspirational Woman. Ek is Abida Dixon Mohammed. My Inspirational Woman vandag is Shahida van de Skyf. En Shahida van de Skyf gaan vandag vir ons a persoonlijke story van haar en haar ma met ons deel. Kom saam.
Assalamu alaikum, hello and a heartly welcome by Inspirational Woman. I am Abida Dixon Mohammed. And my Inspirational Woman vandag is Shahida van de Skyf. The reden is ook om ek een bykie by haar kom keir het vandag, want haar story het vir my rarig geraak. Assalamu alaikum Shahida. Wa alaikum salam wa tiabida en shukran for having me. No problem. Shahida, eerste ding wat ek gauw by jou wil weet is, dit gaan oor jou lewe, maar dan het jy dan een boek geskryf. Laat ons gauw daar begin. Om een boek te skryf oor een mense lewe is mos nie makkelijk he. Well, Auntie Bida, you know, it was definitely a difficult task, mm. I think, because of the emotional element. It's about your life, yes. to be quite honest. Mm. And the book, I obviously wrote the book to honor my mother who mm. I lost to cancer. And my she Allah grant died. Jenna. I mean, and she actually passed away at a very young age. Mm. And so I felt that there was a story that needed to be told. And that was really the reason behind writing that book. Okay. Now, as we speak now from our domain, I say that young, who out was young? She was 25 years old when she wow. died, which means that she was diagnosed with cancer at a very, very young age. Mm. I believe she was as young as 20. Sure. Baie van ons wat 25 behaal, dink nog ons het die hele leven voor vir ons nie, en kyk dan 25 was jou maar reeds weggevan. Maar dan nou, as jou maar 25 dan was, was jou maar swanger met jou, of hoe, hoe werk die story daar? That's exactly the title of the book. So the title of the book is called Miracle. Yes. And Auntie Bida, you're actually looking at that miracle. So oh, wow. She, she wasn't aware at the time that she was actually pregnant mm. because she had radium pins in her body and they basically told her, hindsight, you can't fall pregnant. Mm, definitely. And as we know, the Almighty had greater plans, mm. clearly. So she was pregnant at the time. She was on radiation and chemo. And uh, she could have been about five months along when mm. they found out. Mm. And at that point, they wanted to terminate the pregnancy. Okay. Maar dan nou automatis, het hulle dit dan nou nie gedoen nie, en hy is nou vandag hier. Maar was daar nou enige, soos hulle sal sê, enige iets wat nagelaat is aan jou dier to die siekte? Definitely, I think, Abida, what happened was, as you can imagine, uh, chemo, radiation, mm. morphine on an infant, um, you know, the fact that I'm alive really is... Oh, Alhamdulillah. Little, you know, it did affect me. Um, well, I, I suffered from dyslexia. Um, I was going colorblind in my eye, my left eye. Mm. Um, I was born with only one ovary. Uh, the the other one was deflated. The fallopian tube was scarred. You know, mm. there was many things. And as I grew older, obviously, mm. they started popping up, as one would say. Um, and one of those things were basically saying that I might not be able to have kids. And vandag het jy twee kinders. I have three. And three? Okay. Ek het nie een mis getel. I three, alhamdulillah, with the kudrat of Allah. I think everything, you know, panned out as it should be. Mm. I met my husband uh, quite early on in life and mm. I said, this is one of the factors, you know. I might not have. So my reward het op die tafel gesit. That was it. And I said, you know, this is what I come with. And... Um, like they say, he was my prince charming, and mm. we got married quite early, and we started our family. Um, yes, with the help of hormone treatment here and there, um, but there they are today. Wow. Nou, ek kan my nou net indink waar die jy moes gegaan het en alles daai. Maar as ek nou goed terugkom na jou, jy het genoem iets van colorblind. Yes. Ons praat van colorblind en nie semi-blind, nie? Nee? Correct. Oh. So basically what it felt like was, as a child, um, colors were completely mixed up. So mm-hmm. it would be orange, black would be gray. And on top of that, I've got the dyslexia, seeing back to front and upside down. So my world was really confusing for yes, me yes. as a child. Learning mm. was just really difficult. Um, but Alhamdulillah, I got through school and studied through all of that. Wow, you know, and like always that. just like I said, I took it with a pinch of salt. Mm. Um, and I actually had surgery, had to have surgery. Um, almost five years now, where I rectified that, and the first day I saw color was the most amazing thing. Hmm. I have to just control myself because your story sounds so amazing. But you didn't also now mention operations. How many operations must you do to go it? Um, in total, I've had six thus far. I'm scheduled for a seven. Um, so basically, what happens is whenever we find a growth or a cyst, it has to be removed. For the simple fact that my mommy had lymphoma um, and uh, she was pregnant with me at the time. Mm. So, you know, through the umbilical cord, 
lots of things took place there and I actually have everybody has cancer cells but I mm. have a little bit more and so we are quite alarmed when we do when those things happen and so I just go in I have to get them out and obviously go on treatment as soon as possible. Now as you now must go for treatment and, and you come not to the store, how do you feel? Well, Aunt Habida, you know, uh, as a baby, we realized that I didn't have a very, very strong immunity, mm. unfortunately. Uh, obviously, to all the meds and treatment she was on. So surgery, quite uh, similar. Mm. The recovery is not as quick as mm. we would hope for. So it's a, it's a rough road, but I've been really positive about it. And Alhamdulillah, six surgeries later, I think I look good. <laughs> Definitely you do. Shows, um, <laughs> Yeah, and I've tried to be very optimistic and positive about everything. Okay. Now, it, now, all the good that you know, Mr. Hermakat, it's that you, maybe, some of the people you hear, you hear that is, it's that you impact our Hermakat. You know, and I grew up very quickly. I think not having a mum has made me matured. Uh, you know, just generally, and then everything that has come from there. I think the Almighty has made me that particular person to be able to. Um, go through that and yes. be able to handle it. Mm. So um, just being this matured person, uh, I think has been a plus for me. Alhamdulillah. Mm -hmm. Now, the question that I know by you will be this: You have three kids, Alhamdulillah, and you're a wonderful man. But after you stand, but now the three kids that you now have. Is er geen problemen met hulle gezondheid te zien dat dit dan ook een probleem voor jou was? Definitely, and that's a very good question, Antje Abida. At this point, they still very young, mm. so they are 11, 10, and 4. And especially with my daughters, I think that was where my concern all lies. So I've got two girls and one boy. Mm. Um, because I actually have the, the cancer gene and more in the female element side yes. of things, you know. Okay with breast cancer and ovarian cancer and you know that type of thing. I think that would be where my concern lies with the girls. Mm. I think I will do anything and everything in my willpower for them to be tested, mm. uh, have their genetics tested and go through all the channels to assure that they obviously aren't afflicted the way that I have been. Mm. And I can only do that once they are a little bit older. <laughs> now, Vita, I can me not understand where you now must have gone and where you still nog now must go. But as a vrouw jou self, hoe affect dit dalk miskien jou maandelikse gedoente? You know, like I, like I said to Antje Abida, you know, everything I've, I've, like I said, I've taken it with a pinch of salt. I've mm. tried to be very positive. I've tried to just see the upside in life, you know. Mm. You know, it's very easy to sit back and be like, oh, why is this happening to me? Mm. Why is this, you know, and sort of go down that path. Mm. I've chosen not to do that. I've chosen to see the positive in everything. Mm. And so I would say that it hasn't really um, affected me in that way because I won't allow it to. Hmm. Good thinking. And I think that that helps me inspire as a means and like, whoop, kijk na a thing where natural means a stop as what the means not to in sit and jammerful for the means itself and so on. And I think that is drastic, the die, 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 die begin van alles where die rey moet gaan in and so on. But say gauw for my, as a means now, praat now van jou wat now dier al hierdie goed te moet gaan. Now, as jy now gaan vir chemo en al die goed wat jy moet dier gaan, en jy kom terug, is jy baie siek of kan jy dalk nog altyd doen wat jy min of meer moet doen? Well, Andy Abida, I haven't actually gone for chemo. No, I can only give a care of word after break that. Well, so the the way that it works is they use what is called the preventative treatment, mm. and they obviously where my issue lies is with hormones. Mm. So it's a quite a tricky thing, as we know, women we're full of hormones, mm. and the minute something spikes or plays up, that is really where my problem lies. Mm. So it's all about trying to keep it stable, and so that is where I've been with treatment mm. it's just mainly um, either an intake of estrogen and trying to keep my levels as normal as possible hmm let it know i don't need to go when i say kijk naar jou it like so prachtig and the people always say that that is eindelijk dat misschien dat jy het een siekte of 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 enige iets van die nie want jy pas dit baie baie goed aan maar Jou man wat dan nou ook so wonderlik is met jou, denk jy dat dit is belangrik vir man en dan families vir die ondersteuning? 
Definitely. I mm-hmm. think having a support system is absolutely essential. Mm-hmm. I think when you have people around you that support you, that love you, makes things a lot easier. Mm-hmm. I think it's also very important to communicate yes. and to be honest, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. to say how you feel. Okay. And when you communicate, you can only get that positive feedback and that reinforcement that you need. Okay. Whether you're going through illness or anything in life as such. Mm-hmm. Last question. Who is your gesondheid op hierdie oomlik? At this current moment, and I, like I always say, I'm fine. Mm. I'm always fine. Mm. I am scheduled for another op, um, and I'm hoping to have that done at the end of July. It's just a small little op where we're going to remove a little nodule that I actually have on my voice box currently. Um, I actually don't always sound like this, Abida. I'm a little bit more clearer. Mm. <laughs> um, but when I swallow, or when I try to project a little bit louder, mm. Uh, I don't know if you actually heard that thing now. Mm. It's actually that... Uh, so, a, a, a groggy dasha, yeah. Okay. Mm. So, it's essential to get that nodule out and just find out what is going on there. Oh. So, that would be the next op that I have coming Okay. Up. Well, and so say my gas uh, Shahida van de Skyf. Play and geskakel, ons is nou weer terug. Dan gaan sy vir ons een nog een story vertaal. Welkom terug by die program Inspirational Women. Ek is Abida Dixon Mohammed en my gast is nog steeds Shahida van de Sky. Shahida het nou een persoonlijke story met ons gedaal van haarself, maar nou wil ek een bykie verder met haar gesels en sy gaan ons vertel wat doen sy nog, terwijl sy goed is. Shahida, jy dan gevertel van ietsie wat jy dan ook aangepak het na al hierdie goed is en so aan. Vertel vir ons kijkers verder een bykie. So, Antia Bida, I basically wanted to honor my mom. Clearly, that is the goal. Mm-hmm. And to create awareness. And I thought to myself, how can I do this? Yes. And that's when I started the Miracle Foundation. Oh. Hence, the book's called Miracle, Miracle. as well. Um, and the Miracle Foundation, I started in 2012. And I thought to myself, how can I get people to fund this? Because there are so many women and children that are afflicted with cancer, as we know. And I can going to say, men are fund this, so I'm going to do it. Yes, it's very difficult, mm. to be honest. Mm. Even me telling my story just wasn't enough as such. I had to go the extra mile. Mm. And that's when I got into the event management side of things. So mm. I actually started my own little events company, mm. called Global Events SA and started doing events at the Cape Town International Convention Center. And Andy Abida, <laughs> that is not easy yeah. at all. Um, and like they say, little old me walked in the very, very big building and mm. everybody looked at me and thought, what are you coming to do here, mm. you know? So in 2012, I, we, we hosted a show called the Chocolate and Candy Expo, and it was over two days. And we saw 20,000 people. Wow. So you can imagine I was extremely elated <laughs> because for every ticket sold, the donations was going to the Medical Foundation, sure. which meant I was closer to my dream oh. ultimately. And that's when I realized that I needed to keep on hosting these very, very big expeditions mm. to continue feeding the fund. Okay. So the two literally go hand in hand. Mm. Um, and the expeditions as such has many elements to it. It's obviously a sales element of signing businesses on, coming up with concepts and marketing and advertising and branding and we could go on. And we did that all ourselves do? Yes, and initially sure. there was no team, um, but I've grown that team over the years, alhamdulillah, That's good. obviously. Um, and the help of family and my husband, as you said, mm. everybody supporting me. Um, I'm still been in the business up till today, mm. hosting my own shows and obviously doing a lot of event management for other shows as mm. well. But all of it is raising funds mm. for the Medical Foundation. And that is what I'm extremely passionate okay. about. Now, say how for who out is the Medical Foundation now? Well, like I said, it started in 2012 okay. originally, mm-hmm. although there was a lot of background work before it. But mm. I mean, literally on the maps, as, as, as one would say, from 2012. Wow. Mm. And at that point, um, I donated all the funds to the Red Cross Children's Hospital Trust. Wow, To the nice. oncology ward. And I thought, I was the child. And how would I give back to children? That just made sense. So I linked the fund to Red Cross as such. Mm. 
and I've been doing that donation with every show thus far. You know her show now in the pipeline. Yes, I've, I've got a fantastic show coming up in July, mm -hmm. on the 28th and 29th of July. It's mm -hmm. called Mega Deals Expo. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of people are saying, Chayna, what's Mega Deals all about? Mm -hmm. So it's literally a shopping show where we offer visitors a bargain, a discount, a clearance deal. And I know, Aunt if you like me, we love shopping <laughs> on a discount. So that is really the, the concept behind it, you know. Mm -hmm. Nou, dan van die geelkies gaan dan ook vir Roy Kruis, soos jy nou net genoem het, en dan ook vir die foundation? 100%. So the way that it would work is, for every ticket sold, a percentage goes straight into the Miracle Foundation. From the Miracle Foundation, we shift it into the Red Cross Children's Trust. Okay. Nou, ek kan dan nou net van my inding dat die foundation al veel verskrikkelijk bezig, maar wat het jy voor die nou eindig gedoen? You know, Auntie Abida had very, very humble beginnings, as one would say. I finished school and I actually studied uh, cosmetology and beauty therapy as such. Mm. And like I said, I obviously met my husband very early on in life. Mm. And obviously our focus at that point was to have a family. And that's what I focused my time on. Mm. And ultimately, eventually growing the foundation and then realizing that I needed to start something to feed it, mm. which is global events. And that is, is, that is really the essence of where I am right now. Okay. Now, as you begin with a show as this, where do you begin? Well, you'd start with a concept. You've got to come up with a concept, mm. and that's obviously studying what people want. What does the visitor want? What type of experience? Coming up with that kind of sets the tone for the event. And then from there, you'd obviously look for vendors, exhibitors, mm. you do everything from rigging, lighting, sound, mm -hmm. um, putting together all the entertainment that happens on the day. Um, and like I said, obviously the posters, um, artwork, the marketing, advertising. So mm -hmm. in a lot of ways, I've kind of become the face of that, you know, mm -hmm. so I've, I've been on radio a, a, a few times mm -hmm. to talk about the shows and things like that to promote it, obviously. Now say for me, do you know your ears to show them? En hy het die einde van die aankom nou achter, maar dit is een succes. Hoe het hy gevoel? It's absolutely amazing, mm. Adiabia. I cannot explain to anyone what that feels like. Mm. The morning of the event, um, you know, you're full of anxiousness, you're nervous, mm. you don't know, is anybody even going to come, um, mm. was the question. You know, and I walked in the hall and there were lines that were snaking around mm. the corner. And it was such a feeling mm. of those eight months of long hours mm. and no sleep, Pedro, mm. alhamdulillah, mm. walking through the hall, realizing that I've given a platform not only for businesses to trade mm. and make money and be successful, mm. but I'm also giving back to something that means so much to me. Mm. Um, there's no emotion that can describe that feeling mm. of, of success, alhamdulillah. Okay. Yo, maar dit is allemaal bezig om mij te kunnen, nee? Ik moet daar aan zijn. Nou, verbeeld nou net voor jou, jij was misschien nog nooit in die convention center, nee? En hier als jij daar ook misschien de eerste, kom ik zeg, moslim persoon, waar dan ook een functie kan geven in die convention center. Dat is mind blowing. It really is, and yeah, that you know, I have walked in CTICC and attended a few events there, there are mm. massive shows and one could only dream of how mm. do you do this, how do you put it together, <laughs> you know, and the fact that I can actually pat myself on the back mm. and say, yes, first Muslim female, young Muslim female at that time mm. to host her own show was immense and mm. even today, continue doing that, uh, being an accredited event host means so much to me and, um, and that's why I keep on going back to CTICC and keep on going back and giving it my all mm. and coming up with new concepts and basically saying, here I am, mm. I'm on the platform mm. and I'm paving the way for the rest of our females in our Muslim community. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now say for me, the youngsters that now out of school are going to trick, what do you know what to do with their life? We are going to go to the bad side, we are going to go in the right direction. What will your advice for them be? You know what, to follow your dreams really. If you are passionate about something, I believe that it's possible. And anything is possible if you believe and you put 150% in it. That's my motto. You know, you've got to love what you do and be passionate about what you do. And I feel that is what's gotten me through my good and bad times, is staying focused 
and being able to actually achieve those goals. Mm. And things don't always go your way, you know. I, I had to take the long route to get to where I needed to be, <laughs> but I'm there now. Mm. So anything is possible. Mm. That's nice to hear. Now, so we also can always say, people can always be afraid to tell you. Because this is not all the time we are as people and so on. But now, with your great functions, what you all by your sit it. Daar is dat misschien zeker nog maar nou een uit die lotheid wat dan nou besef of misschien wil sê, nee, maar dit is die regie en dit is die regie. Hoe hanteer jy die persoon? Well, to be honest, Sandy Abida, I wasn't necessarily designed for the business. Yeah. I've grown in it. Mm. And you learn from your mistakes. You quickly realize you cannot please everyone. And especially in the circumstances where you want to please the visitor that's paying for the ticket, mm. you want to please the business that is showcasing, you know, you want to please both entities and on top and above of all of that, you've got the foundation now yes. that needs the funding. Mm, mm. So it's a lot on your shoulders. Mm -hmm. I've learned over the years to give my best mm. and sometimes my best isn't always good enough. Mm. But knowing that I've put money into the fund, mm. I've given people a place to trade mm. and I've given our visitors something to do over the weekend, mm. I believe that is my best. Okay. Wat denk jy sal jou ma gesê het vandag as sy moes geleef het? Oh, that's a very difficult <laughs> question, Auntie Abida. I can only hope mm. that she is proud. My mm. ander krant het jy na, inshallah. Ek kan ook dan sien jy is besig om my traankies te laat loop. <laughs> so, question, yes, Auntie <laughs> Want soos ek net gesê het, ek kan my net verbeel waardoor jy moes gaan of gegaan het. Maar mag alle het vir jou baie makkelijker maak. In alles van die beste vir jou. In alles van die beste vir jou. You know, Auntie Abida, there's nothing more that a child would want but to please their parents. Definitely. Yes, I say for my guest, Shaida van der Skyf, baie, baie shukran for her gedeelte wat she deal with us today, because it can't be easy. I, myself, must be able to do my work, because my trainer will work. But until the next time. And I hope every day, together with me and Shaida, will be able to do it. Until the next time, I'm happy, I'm Abida Dixon Mohamed. Tot ziens, wassalamu alaikum. And that's it for this week's episode of Inspirational Women. Join us next week as we bring you more fascinating stories from inspirational women from all walks of life. And remember, your dreams are your anchor to the future.